Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at pretty much everything you can do with a brush tool. Um, the brush tool is probably one of the most underestimated tools in Photoshop. It's just so easy to pick up the brush tool and play with it and paint with it and think you understand how it works. But the brush tool is actually very powerful and it can be used in so many ways to do so many things. Um, it's pretty essential that you have a good understanding of how you can use the brushes available to you. And in this tutorial, we're not only going to learn how to use the brushes available to you, but we're going to learn how to create new brushes, how to edit the brushes that are available to you, and how to load in other people's brushes, brushes that other people have created. But before we get into any of this advanced sort of brush tool stuff, we're going to take a look at some of the brush tool basics, make sure you know your stuff about the brush tool. So, obviously, the brush tool is located over here in the toolbar, right here in the top right-hand corner of the Drawing Tool and Retouching and Painting Tools section of the Toolbox or Toolbar here. The brush paints with the foreground color. In this case, the foreground color is black, so it's painting with black. And you can use the brush tool just by clicking and dragging. It's really a no-brainer. Setting the size of the brush tip is pretty easy as well. You just come up here into this top toolbar, hit that little bottom or down arrow, and it pops up in this little menu where you can actually choose other brush presets. But you can also use the master diameter slider here to adjust the size of your brush head. You can see I've got it very small and I've got it very large. You can also adjust the hardness, and the hardness, watch this. When I press, you can see it gives me a circle. Well, I'm gonna adjust the hardness here and I'm gonna make the hardness zero. Now when I do that, you can see I get a very soft edged brush. It's no longer no longer has that hard edge. It's got a very soft edge. So the hardness just determines the hardness of the edge of the brush. Okay. <clears throat> you can also set your brush to paint in a blend mode by changing the mode up here in the toolbar. And you can paint on a new layer. No, no, I believe you have to paint on the layer. You actually have to paint on the layer in order for those changes to take effect on that layer. For example, if I wanted to change the lightness or the luminosity, I could just switch that to luminosity, but that's not really doing anything. I could paint in multiply mode. Okay, all sorts of different things you can do with the brush using blend modes. Um, really, to mess around with it, an easy one will be the dissolve here because I've got a very soft brush. You can see it's just giving me like that spattered look. Okay, so those are some of the things you can do uh, with the brush tool. Um, other things, the opacity of your brush. The brush opacity is actually pretty interesting because what this is going to do is it is going to lay down your stroke, your paint stroke at 50% opacity. Whoops, let me change my blend mode back to normal. At 50% opacity. You can see we can sort of see through it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make that even less opacity, opaque. I'm going to lower the opacity to about 30%. And we can see right through it and see this microphone still. And if we keep painting over it, you can see we can still see through it. Okay? It stays there at 30% opacity unless we, we have to click and keep clicking and letting go and going back up over it to build ourselves up to 100% opacity. So the advantage to using the opacity slider is if you're just going in one stroke, you can see I can keep scrubbing over one area and it just stays at 30% opacity. It doesn't allow me to get any darker than that, which can be nice depending on what you're doing. The other slider up here is the flow slider. Now the flow slider works a lot like the opacity slider, except unlike the opacity slider, if you decide to keep rubbing over an area, it will keep building up the layers of paint until you're just 100% opacity. So both the opacity and the flow sliders have their places at certain times when you're doing certain things. One other thing that we have up here in the toolbar is the airbrush. And the airbrush, again, is yet another building up option as if we don't have enough already, but actually we don't because the airbrush really fills in the void left by the opacity and the flow adjustments here. The airbrush, well let me show you real quick. If we soften this brush, I'm going to put the hardness at zero. If I click and hold, you can see nothing happens. Now if I set the airbrush to on and I click and hold, 
it's going to keep laying paint down and keep making it thicker and thicker and thicker. So that's essentially what the airbrush does, is it allows you to have a more airbrushed look, as almost as if you're spray painting or something like that. I've never spray painted before. That sounds convincing, doesn't it? Okay, so that's what the airbrush is for. Now, one other last thing that you ought to know about the brush tool before we get moving on to some other things is making a straight line with a brush tool is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is press the brush tool down once, and I've let go with my mouse, and I'm going to move it over, and I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to press again. And that's going to draw a straight line with your brush tool, and I can press and hold shift again, and I'm holding shift down, I can just press again and again, and we've got this nice little square here, and all of our lines are straight. So that's just a quick little tip as far as using the brush tool. Now, I mentioned just a second ago about adjusting the size of your brush tip, and you have to open up this menu here and adjust the size. Now, if you can imagine masking something in or painting something, that takes a lot of time. You've got to come all the way up here and mess with these sliders. Well, Adobe has, thankfully, given us a hotkey or a couple hotkeys to adjust the diameter of our brush head and actually the softness of the brush head as well. To adjust the diameter of the brush head, use your bracket keys. Just to the right-hand side of your P key are the bracket keys. And the left bracket makes your brush smaller, and by holding the right bracket, you make it bigger. Okay? You can also press it just one at a time to make the uh, brush go up and down in increments, or you can press and hold it to make it quickly zoom up or quickly zoom down. And making the brush softer or harder is pretty easy. Hold down the Shift key, and Shift right bracket makes your brush harder. Shift left bracket makes it soft. So those are a couple quick, helpful hotkeys that will save you a ton of time if you use the brush tool a lot. And if you're going to be doing any kind of photographic work or pretty much anything in Photoshop, you're going to run into the brush tool. And those hotkeys will save you a ton of time. Now, brushes do not only have to be applied by your hand. There are other ways of controlling the way a brush is applied. And specifically here, we're going to look at applying a brush stroke to a path. So I'm going to grab the pen tool, and if you know how to use a pen tool, you can create yourself a path as well. I'm going to make sure I have create paths selected up here in the toolbar. That's the icon in the middle. And I'm going to make sure I've got the pen tool, not the freeform pen tool. I'm just going to make an arc out here. Now, if I come over to the paths palette, I've got this work path. I'm actually going to delete this other old work path. This work path, I'm going to drag it down to the new path to save the path. I can even name it. I'll just name it brush. And there are a couple ways I can stroke this path here. The easier way is to just hit this little ring here at the bottom of the paths palette. And that just strokes the path with the active brush, which in this case is a 60 pixel brush with zero hardness. If I increase the hardness and I hit stroke it again, you're going to see it's going to stroke it with the harder brush. So that is one way to stroke your path with a brush. Another way to stroke a path with your brush is by right clicking this path and hitting stroke path. Now doing it this way is going to prompt you to choose a tool here. And you can choose a whole bunch of tools. You can use the color replacement tool, the sponge, burn, dodge, all this stuff in here you can use. And you can also simulate pressure. And simulating pressure is pretty interesting. What it's going to do is it's going to start us off at this one point of the path as if we're not pressing down the brush very hard and work our way up to a full the full size of the brush and it's going to work its way back down, almost fading in and fading out. Now if I hit OK, you're going to see exactly what I mean. And it did not simulate there, and I don't know why. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, I know. I'm going to grab the brushes palette. I'm just dragging the brushes palette out. I'm just going to check off shape dynamics. That's why. Now when we right click and we hit stroke path, simulate pressure, it's going to simulate as if we were applying some sort of pressure using a pen tablet. If you don't have a tablet, that can be helpful for some sorts of things. So I just thought I'd point that out there. Okay, so now that we know a little about using brushes, let's look at editing pre-existing brushes, brushes that you have in your copy of Photoshop. 
Now, in order to edit the pre-existing brushes, we need the brushes palette, which you just saw me pull out just a second ago. That's under Window, Brushes. And I'm going to drag that, whoops, not the layer comps. We want the brushes, there we go. Okay, well, the brushes palette comes out, there we go. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to uncheck Shape Dynamics. This is the brushes palette, and the brushes palette, as you will soon find out, is full of all kinds of options for you to play with, and is actually quite powerful as far as these palettes go. The brushes palette is going to let you set all kinds of characteristics um, of the brush that you've selected. All of these characteristics are going to affect the brush as you paint with it. Um, a quick tip, actually, I'm going to close the brushes palette. A quick way to display this is, if I can get it to close here, let me put it back up there. Okay, a quick way to get this dis to display, actually there are two ways, the hotkey is F5, but the other way is when you have a brush tool selected, oops, the brush tool selected here, you can see this little icon here in the top right hand corner, well, actually not really the top, just the right hand side of the top toolbar. When I hit that, it's going to open up the brushes palette. So that's just a quick way to get the brushes palette open but F5 is really the quickest way, that hotkey, it's a good one to memorize if you're going to be using brushes a lot. Okay, so, looking over the brushes palette, we're going to start at the top of this palette and work our way down. So, the first thing to look at, if we're starting from the top, well, obviously, the minimize and close buttons to minimize and close the palette, which, for some reason, just a second ago, and my close button still is not working, but a close button normally would close the palette. Um, but just below the close button is this little arrow, and when you click it, you've got this flyout menu. Let me move my brushes palette up so you can see the flyout menu. And in the flyout menu, we have some options, dock to palette wall, expanded view. We're not going to worry about them. New brush preset. We're going to look at that in a second. Clear all brush, brush controls, excuse me, and reset all locked settings. These will reset brushes to default settings that the brushes have been set to before, uh, depending on what the brushes were. Like if I come in here and put a bunch of scattering and shape dynamics, dual brush, all of that, and then I come into here and I say clear brush controls. It's going to uncheck all of that stuff and bring it back to what I had before. Um, although it's not an undo key, it's just going to clear all the settings from the brush. So just remember when you do that. Okay, and then we have some viewing options here. If I hit brush presets, we can choose to see only text, small thumbnails, large thumbnails, small list. I usually use stroke thumbnail because the stroke thumbnail shows you both a small thumbnail with the size of the brush head and like a little visual of what your stroke is going to look like. So that's very nice to be able to see. You get your preset manager for all of your preset brushes. And we have reset brushes, load brushes, save brushes, and replace brushes. Now, the this load brushes, that is how you are going to access other people's brushes. For example, if you download a pack of brushes off the web, you come in here to load brushes, what you're going to want to do when you download them is save them into your Adobe Photoshop CS2 folder on your hard drive. Go into the presets folder and then go into the brushes folder. And in here you're going to save that .abr file. And then in Photoshop you would come in here, come into this little menu, hit load brushes, and you would come in here and you would find the little library of brushes and you'd hit load. And it would bring them into here. You can also hit replace brushes, and that replaces your list of brushes here with, let's say, natural brushes too. We've got all these different brushes now. Okay, so that's what that is. Now, there are all of these brushes here. If you just save your brushes in this brushes folder, you actually don't have to even use that load brushes command. You can just choose it from the list here because all of these, if you noticed, were in my brushes folder there on my hard drive. So I could just select any of these, assorted brushes, whatever. Right now, I'm going to go back to basic brushes. Now, when you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to replace the current brushes. Now, if I hit OK, it's going to replace the current brushes. If I hit Cancel, obviously, it's not going to do anything. If I hit Append, what that's going to do is attach this list of brushes to the bottom of the, these brushes here. So I'll have both these brushes open and my basic brushes. I'm going to hit OK, though, so I just replace all those brushes and don't have two libraries of brushes open at the same time. Now, the Brush Presets tab, which we're in right now, allows you to choose a new brush preset and adjust the master diameter or the diameter of the tip of the brush. The Brush Tip Shape tab is slightly more powerful. That allows you to change the diameter of the brush tip 
or select a new brush, but it also allows you to flip the brushes X or Y, uh, or flip the brush, excuse me, along the X or Y axis. And really, with a circular brush, that's going to do nothing. I'm going to come in here to assorted brushes because there's some interesting styled brushes here. For example, let's just grab this star. And if I flip this along the X, it's just going to flip the star. You probably can't see the difference. But if I flip it along the Y, you're going to see it's flipping the star upside down. We can see that more clearly in just a second. One other thing the brush tip shape window or tab, excuse me, allows you to do is adjust the spacing. Now, the spacing is the amount of times this brush stamps itself down. So if I increase the spacing, you're going to see that now this brush is not really going to put many stars out. But if I reduce the spacing, it's going to be just like one solid brush with spiked ends. So let me just increase the spacing real quick. And if I hit flip Y, you're going to see it's going to flip all those stars upside down. And the same thing with flip X, but you can't really see because the brushes, or these stars, excuse me, are virtually the same side to side. And one other thing that the tip shape tab allows you to do is change the angle and or roundness of your brush. So I can squash these stars down. I can stretch them back out. I can change the direction or the angle. So there's quite a bit you can do here in the brush tip shape section. But we're going to move on here to the shape dynamics. Oh, and actually, before we move on to shape dynamics, one other thing that this uh, tip shape allows you to do is under basic brushes, uh, depending on the kind of brush, you can also adjust the hardness of the brush. Just one quick thing I thought I would point out. All right, let's go on to shape dynamics. Now, we're going to look at shape dynamics, scattering, color dynamics, and other dynamics. We're not really going to get into texture and dual brush and any of this other stuff. All of these other things are just minor adjustments. Um, they're the kind of things you can just play around with, and you'll kind of get what they do. The shape dynamics and scattering and color dynamics and other dynamics, they're a little more complicated, and we're going to go into a little more detail as far as how to use them. But you know what? Before we go into all these different dynamics of just one of these brushes, let me show you how to create your own brushes. I'm going to drag the brushes palette back over here to the little toolbar. Now, we're going to look at creating two different kinds of brushes. We're going to look at creating your own custom brushes and a brush from an image. Brushes from images are pretty cool, and you're going to see how we can use them in just a minute. But we're going to start out with just a plain old draw-it-yourself brush, I guess you could call it. We're going to grab the pen tool, and I'm just going to draw a little diamond shape. Just like this, whoops. Just like that. Now I'm going to come into my paths palette, and I'm going to hit fill path right there. Deselect that path, go back to my layers palette. I'm going to select that layer one with that diamond looking thing on it, and I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm going to hit Define Brush Preset. And you get this pop-up dialog box. Whoops. One thing you need to do is you need to make sure it's selected. So I'm going to Command or Control click that thumbnail to that layer one. So we just have that black star selected. And I'm going to come up to Edit and Define pr Brush Preset. Excuse me. And you can see it gives us a little thumbnail of our brush. And we're just going to call this oh, Starry. And hit OK. Command or Control D to deselect. And we can now garbage that layer, and we're going to create a new layer. And I can grab my brush tool. And sure enough, down here at the bottom of my brush presets, I have this new brush. And it's this star brush that I've just created. And I can change the size of it. And we're actually going to set some dynamics to this in just a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to create a brush out of an image. I have this iStock photo here, and it's a great stock photo. Um, it's just a tomato. And we're going to make a tomato brush. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J. And we're just going to work here on layer one. I'm going to grab the magic wand tool and I'm going to select all the white in the background. And I'm just going to delete it. So now we just have a tomato sitting on transparency. And I'm going to Control click that tomato. And I'm going to come up here to edit. And I'm going to hit Define Brush Preset. And you can see that our brush looks like a tomato. And I'm just going to call it Tom. OK. Command or Control D to deselect. I'm going to minimize that tomato document because we don't really need it right now. I'm going to grab the brush tool once again. And again, down here at the bottom of our brush presets, we have a new brush. 
and it's this tomato. And you can see whenever we press, it applies a tomato. I can give it the red color, and it's going to make it pretty vibrant red. We don't need it quite that red. Let's try this. Okay, just like that. It's slightly desaturated. But if you keep clicking, eventually what it's going to do is just give you a tomato shape. It does have somewhat of the lighting it saves, so that's kind of neat. There's a lot of cool things you can do with image brushes if you have the right image and enough time to play around with it and really see what you can get. So that's how you create an image brush, and that's also how you create a shape brush. So let's get back into the brushes palette and learn a little bit about those shape dynamics and scattering. Let's grab the star brush right there. And I'm going to hit F5 to open up my brushes palette. And I'm going to drag it whoops, back out here on screen so you can see it. Now, we're going to adjust a few things here with this star brush. We're going to increase the spacing for one so I can see each individual star, just like that. And I'm actually going to make the diameter a slight bit smaller. I'm going to bring it down to about 80 pixels. And we're going to look at shape dynamics here. Now, the shape dynamics, the way you activate these dynamics is just by pressing the name shape dynamics and it's going to check that box off. Now we also when we click that we get to the shape dynamics tab and underneath here we have all these different jitter options and we're going to look at the jitter options. Size jitter basically what jitter is is the amount you're going to allow it to flex itself okay the amount you're going to allow it to randomize I guess I should I could say. So the more I increase the size jitter the more we're going to allow these stars to go from between full 100% size and being nothing essentially. So you can see we've got a wide variety of different shaped stars and beneath that is a very interesting control and it's called control and it controls. It controls the amount of star it is allowing to be shown. For example when I just press and drag it's giving me all different random sizes of stars. Now I have it set to pen pressure so when I use my tablet when I press down lightly, it's going to keep the stars small, but when I press harder, it's going to make the stars bigger. So that can be very helpful. But if you don't have a palette, or excuse me, a pen tablet, it is going to give you this little warning triangle here to the left hand side if you use pen tilt or pen pressure. And possibly stylus wheel, I don't know for sure though. Yes, that well, stylus wheel must be something else um, because that's giving me a warning triangle. And I have a pen tablet, but we're not going to worry about stylus wheel right now. The other thing that you can use is fade, and fade is very cool because what fade allows you to do is specify the number of steps it takes this brush to fade to nothing. So if I say 30, it's going to apply 30 of these star brushes before it just drops into nothing. So I'm going to start up here, and you're going to see that by the time I get to 30, it is nothing. So I've laid down 30 stars, and it's nothing and the brush just stops at that point. So that can be very cool for doing all sorts of different effects. I'm going to leave mine to pen pressure though because I have a pen tablet and that's personally the way I like to use that. The other thing to make this star pattern or the star brush really more interesting is going to be using an angle jitter. We're going to allow our brush to angle freely. We're going to pump that up to 100% as well. So these stars are going to be flipped all over the place. And they're going to be scattered all over the place and going crazy. And the control for this as well will be pen pressure. Okay, roundness jitter. We can affect the roundness jitter. Um, I usually don't go too crazy on that. We'll set it to be 50% for here and just leave control off. Now, one thing I will point out, if you leave control off for like the size jitter, it's going to do absolutely nothing. It's not going to allow you to control the size, that is if you have a pen tablet, it's just going to apply just as if you're using a brush. Okay, it's just Photoshop's going to do its own thing and it's going to apply them randomly for you. Now that's good if you just have a mouse because obviously that's all you can do anyway. But if you have a pen tablet, again, you should use pen pressure. Gives you just a little more control. So let's move on and check out this scattering tab here. Scattering is really cool. I love the scattering option and a lot of what I use brushes for, I use scattering for, uh, or I use scattering in. Um, the one thing that you probably wouldn't use scattering for is if you're trying to mask something because you'd have stuff going everywhere and you would just turn into a mess very quickly. Um, but scattering controls the amount the brush marks are spread over an area or the area around your paintbrush. The more you increase scattering, the further you're going to allow your objects to scatter themselves. You can see here as I increase the scattering, my preview, I've got these star things going everywhere. And if I have both axes checked, basically when both axes is checked, 
it scatters the stars in like this radial shape around where you're brushing. Whereas if you don't have that checked off, it just sort of scatters them in a different way. It's kind of complicated and hard to tell the difference, but there is a difference nonetheless. Okay, and you can also control the count of stars. Now, beware when you are increasing the count, you only can go up to like 15 or 16, but usually three or four is plenty for what you're going to do unless you're trying to lay something on really thick. The count, you can really end up putting a lot of brush strokes down and you can really slow your computer down if you go up to like 10 or 12 in the count. Usually I stick around 3, 4, 5, 6. Usually I can find what I need there. And you also have a count jitter. Depending on the pen pressure, it's going to put more out or less. Or if you just leave control off, Photoshop's going to do its own thing and take care of you when it comes to the count jitter. But I usually don't jitter the count. I'm usually fine with what I select. But I just figured as usual I will point it out and let you know about it. Okay, and the color and other dynamics, these are just more jitter options. For example, right now my foreground and background colors are red and white. So if I increase my foreground and background jitter, basically these stars will come in anywhere from that red to that white. You can see I've got pinks, I've got really light pinks, I've got you know really dark pinks, and all sorts of things coming in between. So, and you also have hue, saturation, and brightness jitters as well. So you've got a lot of stuff you can play with in here. And other dynamics is more jitter options. Opacity, the how opaque your brush goes down. Um, that's a very cool one, and that's a very useful one, actually, depending on what you're doing. And flow jitter. Flow, again, remember we discussed flow up here in the brushes palette. It's going to jitter the amount of flow that your brush has. So color and other dynamics are very useful as well. So there's a lot of dynamics you can set here for any one of your brushes. And one important thing to know is that once you have finished tweaking your brush, if you close out of Photoshop or you switch to another brush or whatever, you lose all of those options you just at or set to that brush unless you save this as a new brush preset. And you can do that by hitting this little new icon right here. And this one we're just going to save as starry one. And you can see it has saved even our size here as 80 pixels. And if I just come back to this star here, let me move this out of the way. We have our original size here. And it is going to be scattered. And the reason it's going to be scattered here is because we haven't closed Photoshop down and all of that yet. But that's not saved like that. So. So we just need to make sure we save these here as we go. And you can see here if I hit 80, I've got all of my settings here. And I've got these stars scattering all over my screen. And it's great. So just like that, I just applied a style to it, by the way, if you're wondering what happened. So that's all about brushes. Um, that's how you create brushes. That's how you use brushes. That's how you edit brushes and tweak brushes. Um, applying brushes to paths, there's a whole lot you can do with brushes, and brushes are just so powerful. And what I suggest you do is take what you've learned here and go out there and start playing with brushes and just learning more and more about brushes. And if, as you look at other people's work and things like that, you'll realize where they actually have used brushes and how you can use brushes to make your stuff look better and better and better. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. And I hope you go check the site out. The site is www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.